Right. The next part of the, of the exercise is to identify the unknown specimen. You've already collected it and uh, pressed it, transferred onto the white page, and then you have dissected the flowers, collected the information. Now you need to find out what spe genus it is or what family it belongs to. The best way to do that is you assume that you don't know anything about that plant and then try to go from a unknown specimen to relatively familiar specimen. How do we do that? It's like a chicken and egg. You're trying to find the name, and but you try to know the name before you find the name. It's almost difficult. Get hold of a local native plant book. For example, if you're living around if you live around Rockhampton, this is the one which I would recommend. And that way, this book will give you the photographs of the plant and also description. So you can see that you, can, you go and collect a specimen and then you can compare the, uh, the color structure and morphology of the plant with that described in the local native plant guide or a book. So once you know the name, then you need to prove that, yes, is that the, the real specimen? And you need to provide the proof to say that this belongs to this particular genus and this belongs to this particular family. The only way you can prove that is to dissect and collect the information, put that information into this manual called Plant Identification Manual. And I've extracted relevant portions from southeast, the flora of southeast Queensland. And you can, that tells you what information you need to use, how to proceed from one step to the another one, to go to the family level, and then once you go to the family level, then you need to go into the genus level. And then once you go to the genus level, you verify whether the specimen description really meets with your, the, the, all the descriptions you have characterized. For example, if you say that this has got five petals in the book, then if you have counted five petals, you are right. Then plus, if it says that it is five sepals, five petals, and ten anthers, then all of them tally with what is described here, and also the photograph of the, uh, the plant which you have collected looks similar to the one which is described in the local book, then you are almost sure that the specimen you collected belong to that particular genus. So the important thing is you need to collect the sample, familiarize yourself with that specimen to ba basic level based on the local books, and then collect the information to prove that that specimen belongs to that particular genus in the family. So the proof is the one which is necessary rather than just giving the name. Giving the name, anybody can look at the color of the plant and the flower and compare that with the local book and they can write the name. They may not be sure whether that belongs to that particular genus. What the difference between that person and you is you are proving, yes, this belongs to genus Acacia because this has got these characteristic features and according to this key and those characters take that specimen to the acacia genus and then belong to the family on uh, the, the Mimosaceae. So the proof is the one which is necessary. That, those are the skills we'll be learning in this course and I hope you will start practicing that at home. When you come to the residential school, you will master those skills. When you're dissecting your flowers, and I recommend you to consult your textbook, which has got the description of different types of uh, flowers, native flowers, and uh, uh, then you'll get lots of clues with, the, with regard to the location of the ovary, location of the, the anthers, location of the petals, because native plants are 
not usual, means they don't have the usual parts. Some of them are missing, some of them are modified, and uh, this book deals with all the major genera of Australia, and as a result, you should be able to get the clue from this book. Always make sure that you have all those resources available. If you get stuck with the identification, go back to your uh, local book, or uh, the key, or maybe the study guide, appendices, and the resource materials, so you'll be able to get some information from them, put them all together to work through the specimen to find the right name.